This was Abdullah Abdullah before his victory in the first round of Afghanistan's presidential election. That moment of high hopes, with limited fraud complaints and Taliban violence, turned into deadlock when the second round showed huge gains for his opponent, Ashraf Ghani. Pretty much within 24 hours of that second round of the election, the Abdullah camp was crying massive fraud on part of the Ghani camp, and things just started falling apart immediately. Now, after months of tension, spirits are once again high with a power-sharing agreement in place. But whether the mood is up or down, the bottom line in Afghanistan is always how the power will be divvied up in the ethnically divided country. The recent history of presidential power in Afghanistan, which led to the long fight this time around. Afghanistan has gone through a number of changes in political system over the last 40 years. Up until the 1970s, it was a constitutional monarchy that was replaced by a communist regime. When the Soviet Union left in 1989, there was a period of civil war which the Taliban eventually won and instituted basically a theocratic religious regime which lasted until 2001. After 9-11 and the U.S. invasion of Afghanistan that followed, the U.N. organized a summit in Bonn, Germany to re-establish Afghan institutions. Ambassador James Dobbins represented the United States in Bonn. The Bonn Accord was to secure agreement among Afghans on a successor regime to the Taliban. The intent was to put together an interim government until elections could be held. The Taliban were overthrown and a democratic system was introduced with a powerful presidency. The UN talks on Afghanistan in Bonn have produced a document. The Americans wanted a very centralized presidency, partly because that's what we're used to, we have one, and they thought that would make things easier, that Afghanistan needed a centralized state. The powers of the presidency are vast. They appoint everyone from sub-district governors, police chiefs in the smallest places, to cabinet ministers. All the money and business stems from being in government. And if you are close to the president, his power kind of filters down through you. If you're on the outside, you're cut out. And that gives a lot of reasons to fight. All Afghans agree that they're Afghan, they want to be Afghan. They're not trying to separate from the nation, but there is definitely a competition for power. In the years following Bonn, Hamid Karzai has used his political skills and presidential powers to straddle Afghanistan's ethnic divides, but the divisions remained. Today, as in 2001, Afghanistan's dominant group are the Pashtuns, centered in the country's south. The second most populous group are the Tajiks. They live predominantly in the north. There are a wide variety of other groups in the country, including the Hazaras and Uzbeks. Karzai was sort of a master of balancing all that. His vice president was one of the Tajiks from the north. Karzai is a Pashtun from the south. His second vice president was from the Hazara community. For 12 years, you've had Karzai kind of balancing all these different competing agendas for wealth and power. This year's vote featured Mr. Ghani, a Pashtun against Mr. Abdullah, a mix of Tajik and Pashtun who chose to be associated with the Tajiks. Unlike Mr. Karzai's past campaigns, both candidates made explicit appeals to ethnic identity. You have to remember, this is a country with a literacy rate that's 30-something percent. What we think of as political platform and stuff doesn't really exist there in that way. People choose who they're supporting in Afghan election largely by ethnic identification. Afghan elections are not about issues. They're not really about platforms. What they're about is about keeping your people in power, rich, powerful, and safe. Now, with the power-sharing agreement in place, the main thing to watch will be whether Mr. Ghani, the new president, will actually share power and the spoils of office with his former opponent. Or whether Afghanistan's recent tradition of strong presidential power will continue with Mr. Ghani, able to dole out the spoils of office as he wishes. It's very hard to see how they find a way to work together and live together in, in a number of areas. You've got a country that's been at war for more 35 years. 
The worst case scenario is that the election creates a split in the government, and then you've got the Taliban, who are still powerful. There it's wide open for them to come in as well. Who knows? You know, and that's a big question.